the government decided to proceed with a trial of badger culling in two areas and a consultation on whether to apply it more widely in England. The idea is that affected areas will be divided up into 150 kilometre square zones. There'd be a lot of those areas in the West Country, for example, and around 1,500 badgers will be killed in each area. They'll be lured out of their sets by bait and then shot. So in two trial areas, 3,000 badgers will be killed. Opinion polls suggest nearly two-thirds of British people oppose killing badgers to try to curb TB in cattle. 1,000 people around the United Kingdom were questioned last weekend by GFK NOP for BBC Online. 63% were against a cull. The remainder favoured one or were undecided. Our environment correspondent Richard Black has been studying the findings. This is believed to be the first opinion poll to offer people a straight yes or no choice on badger culling. And the answer is no, in every region of the UK, across all age groups and both genders. The majority against is virtually the same in urban and rural areas, even in places such as southwest England where farms have been hard hit by bovine TB. Farmers have spent years lobbying for a cull because badgers can spread TB between cattle herds. The government admits that its final decision will hinge partially on public opinion. An oral badger vaccine against TB may be several years further off than researchers and the government had hoped. A vaccine carried on bait is seen by some as the only long-term alternative to a badger cull to control TB among cattle. DEFRA has conceded that its target of developing the oral vaccine by 2015 is now likely to be missed. In the meantime, the government's Food and Environment Research Agency is looking at how injecting badgers works on 93 farms in Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust and the National Trust in Devon are also trialling the measure. I joined Professor Robbie MacDonald from Ferrer early on a June morning to see badger vaccination in action. So this is the first badger of uh, year two of the project and you can see now he's in, the, he's in the cage. This has just been caught last night. He's ready to go back underground now. So you can see Matt's just got behind it. That's it, it's done. So for a wild animal, you know, that's surprisingly easy to do. You just hear that little hiss, that's the marker spray because we trap here for two nights. We don't want to give another dose of vaccine to the same animal. The badger is in a wire box that is about what, three feet long by 18 inches wide. Mm -hmm. And when Matt was injecting it, its bottom was facing us and it was just sitting there. I expected it to be more or less bouncing off the walls of the cage. And when he stuck the needle in, it just flinched very yeah. Yeah. slightly. I expected that to be a very angry badger. I mean, yeah. It's getting a bit fractious now. Yeah, it I mean, clearly wants to, get out. Yeah, wants to get I mean, these badgers are ready for bed. But no, it's not a huge reaction. Although they're wild animals, when you know what you're doing, this is a fairly easy job. Oh, you can just see the badger's been released. So you can see the set hole here is just about sort of 10 feet away. And he's straight back underground again. How labour intensive and therefore expensive is vaccinating badgers? Well, it does take a lot of work. The vaccination bit that you've just seen is the sort of tail end of the process. So the guys have been working here for a few days, setting these traps in place and then pre-baiting them. It's not a, a particularly cheap way of doing it. You know you've got the vaccine into the animals and we know that it reduces then the incidence of disease. What have you found in terms of how many badgers you vaccinate? Because obviously you need to be reaching quite a high percentage for this to work. You don't have to trap and vaccinate all of the badgers. When we trap here, it's about 80%, something like that, of the animals in the population that we would contact. There are, of course, a proportion of the population that already have disease, and vaccination isn't going to do them any good. So we don't know which of these animals, if any, in fact, have TB. If they don't have TB, then this vaccine is an effective way of preventing that disease risk in future. Is vaccination any use, then, in areas where there's already a problem? Absolutely. I mean, this whole area where we're working now and the area where the clinical trial took place is areas of high prevalence of TB in badgers. Yes, there is that issue about the infected animals, but as those animals die out and as new cubs are born into the population, if we're immunising those, then it's going to reduce the force of infection onwards. Professor Robbie MacDonald from the Food and Environment Research Agency in the Woods near Stroud earlier this year. Well, Fran Barnes has been looking into the delay to that oral badger vaccine against TB. Fran, what makes it particularly difficult to develop an oral vaccine? If you're coming up with a vaccine which badgers would eat on a bait, you have a few problems to solve. 
One is finding a bait that badgers like, but which wouldn't be hoovered up by other animals. Another issue is that scientists are using the BCG vaccination. That's the one that many of us had at school. And this is a live bacterial formulation. So it's tricky developing something which will survive a badger's stomach acids. On top of that, the difficulty with oral vaccination in general is that it's harder to control the dose an animal eats compared to measuring it out in a syringe. So where does this delay leave the vaccination programme? It means that one of the long-term goals has been pushed further away, leaving only the prospect of badger vaccination by injection in the short to medium term. It was hoped that an oral badger vaccination coming on stream in 2015 would offer a cheaper and a more practical alternative to injecting. That method has obvious practical complications. First, catch your badger and a price tag to match. DEFRA puts the cost of injecting badgers against TB at a bit over £2,000 per square kilometre. Aside from badger vaccination, the Holy Grail is a cattle TB vaccine. Scientists have made progress in developing one and a test to tell vaccinated and infected animals apart, but it has yet to be licensed. A new EU legislation would be needed to allow cattle vaccination against TB. And of course, the wait continues to hear the government's decision on a badger cull in England, doesn't it? Indeed it does. Last September, DEFRA consulted on its plans to allow farmers to cull badgers under licence in designated TB hotspot areas in the southwest and the Midlands. We're told an announcement will be made before the end of the month about whether that proposal will go ahead. Meanwhile, in Wales, the Assembly Government's badger cull plans are still under review. The government is expected to announce imminently a decision on whether to start a badger cull in England. To meet his own deadline, the farming minister Jim Pace has just 36 hours to make an announcement. Earlier in the year, the minister said he would clarify the issue as to how best control TB in cattle before the parliamentary recess. Well, the government said last year that it would push ahead with plans for a cull after a consultation. But over a year on, there's still been no further confirmation. We've just had three major contributions to this debate from the most senior scientists in this particular discipline over the last week, which comprehensively rule out culling as as anything but a a long-term, very slight benefit, if any. How hopeful are you that a a cull won't happen? Ah, No, I'm not, I'm not playing the hope game, not at all. It would be good if people listened to reason, not from me, but from the accumulated body of scientific opinion. But it's not opinion, it's fact that has now been presented to the public over the last week. We've put out statements about it and so on. It's been reported in the press, the Imperial College of Science, the independent scientific group that oversaw the... £50 million uh, badger culling trial, and Lord Krebs, the man who designed that culling trial, they've all come out with a broad consensus that culling would be foolhardy and hazardous. Jack Greedy from the Badger Trust. Well, we have been here before, of course. Lord Krebs wrote a report on it in 1997, which established some connection between badgers and cattle TB uh, and led to the Krebs trials looking into it. Lord Krebs joins us now, as does Kevin Pearce, who leads on the issue of TB for the National Union of Farmers. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Lord Krebs, take us through where you think the evidence lies now. Well, first of all, uh, one must say this is a serious problem for farmers and it's getting worse. And that's why it's absolutely important not to tackle it with the wrong solution. But the scientific research that led, uh, that arose from my report in 1997, shows surprisingly, that killing badgers is the wrong solution. Even after very intensive culling for four and a half years, we look now back nine years later, and the reduction in cases of TB in cattle in the areas where badgers are being killed is somewhere between 12 and 16 percent. So it leaves eight out of every 10 cases to nine out of every 10 cases in cattle still there. It's not an effective solution, and it's just simply heading in the wrong direction, going against the science. Kevin Pearce, do you accept that that is the kind of scale of reduction that the cull can achieve? Um, In terms of the published data, that could be the the size of the uh, reduction, but um, 
the follow-up work to Professor Krebs' um, trial is actually shown to the end of February, a 31.5% reduction in the areas that were culled then. So there's still a lot of work to be done on this. Um, what we know for absolute certainty is that the science says that a cull can deliver results. The issue for us is, can we replicate the right conditions to ensure but, that it's done properly? So it's the right kind of cull. But, we, but even both of you are agreeing that we're talking about something less than, far vastly less than half the, the, the TB being eradicated by a cull. Something between, say, 15 and 30% of that scale. But, but that's important because you've got to, it sounds easy when we throw away those figures. But for individual farmers, that could mean the difference between 500 to 1,000 right. less new herds going down with TB every year. Lord Krebs, can you explain why culling doesn't work or what kind of culling will work better than other kind of culling? Because of course one does imagine that if we do establish the link between ba uh, badgers and cattle TB, you would just think the more badgers you kill, the less TB there'll be. Yes, I agree. And I was really quite surprised with the outcome of these long-term trials. But I think there are at least two factors here. One is that many of the cases of TB in cattle probably more than half, result from cattle-to-cattle -cattle transmission. So although badgers are a source, they may be a relatively minor source. But other, the other point, and very important, is that badgers have a territorial structure. And once you start to shoot badgers or remove them, you break down the territorial system and you suck in new sick badgers carrying the disease and spreading it more rapidly. And one point that's really important is that the farmers around the edge of any cull area will, as according to the results of the trials, suffer an increase in TB. So there may be some who get a small gain, but equally there will be other farmers whose livelihoods are more threatened as a result of culling. And I can't understand why the farmers' union thinks this is a good idea. Kevin Pearce? Well, we think it's a good idea because it's making a, 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 a real contribution to trying to get on top of this disease. Anywhere in the world where you have bovine TB and wildlife are implicated, you have to deal with the wildlife um, host before you make any real progress. Lord Krebs, why do you think the farmers uh, are so keen on this if it's not going to work? I mean, it, 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 they're the ones who are right at the front edge. They've got the most interest in trying to identify the, the answer to this, aren't they? Yes, if I could just <clears throat> make a couple of comments. Firstly, that uh, although I was a signatory to the report that the DEFRA Chief Scientific Advisor put together in April, that report does not say that culling is the way forward. In my view, the government has ignored the scientific advice. But coming back to your question as to why the farmers are so keen, I think it's a kind of simplistic view that if badgers are a reservoir, I've got badgers on my farm and my cattle are at risk, let's get rid of the badgers. And certainly that sounds perfectly logical. But the fact is, and we can't ignore this huge scientific experiment, the huge mass of evidence that's been accumulated, it simply is an ineffective way of controlling the we, disease. We'd better leave it there. Lord Krebs, Kevin Pearce, thank you very much indeed.